so far, whatever that we have been doing was either an Atari game or a game of chess, Go, or we were training simple robots in simulated environments like Majuku, like OpenAI Gym. Can we get a little bit more serious and more ambitious and actually work, work in the physical world? So the next two papers are about that, but they are going to be very quick. The methodology is not too complicated, but the fact that whatever that we learned before about reinforcement learning is actually useful uh, and we are going to use it in practice. So this is actually real stuff. You put some camera in front of your car, a left camera, a center camera, and a right camera. And somebody is going to sit in a car, in a car that has these three cameras, and it starts driving. So they're going to keep steering the wheel, and they're going to change the angle and keep driving. So somebody is driving. You are monitoring your road, collecting data, both from the driver and from these cameras, and you're storing them in your SSD hard drive. So you keep driving. You hire a couple of drivers and you let them drive. That's going to give you a lot of data to work with. But if you have a good driver, they are not going to make much mistakes. So they are not going to uh, they're going to drive in a straight line if they have to. Okay, so they are going to keep their lane. And if you don't make any many mistakes in your life, you are not going to learn. It's the same thing for a neural network. If you don't show it some mistakes, it's not going to learn. But you don't want to collect mistakes because you are in the real world. You don't want to cross the line because it's going to lead into accidents. But what can you do? You can take a look at your cameras and then do random shifts and rotations. And you know what shift and rotation you did to those images. So the same way you can correct the behavior of your steering to bring you back to the same location. So this shift and rotation is simulating the behavior that you just, you're just uh, crossing a line. You are not keeping your lane. But then we know how to cancel that out because this is a shift and rotation that we introduced to the data. So we can cancel that out. We know that what type of steering is going to cancel that out. If the car is going to the left, we are going to cancel it out by turning the wheel to the right. So your CNN is going to take these cameras, those images, and it's going to give you the steering command. You know the ground truth. You know what the CNN is outputting. It's going to give you some errors that you can backpropagate and update your CNN. So that's how you're supervising your CNN. So it is imitation learning. And you keep doing that. You have a lot of data, you keep doing that. And let's see what happens. That's training for testing. You look at your center camera, you push it your CNN, and that's going to give you your steering command. Now your car is driving on its own. And then uh, physically, you're going to drive by, vi by some wiring interface. So these are engineering problems. We don't want to go into that. So you are turning your wheel based on the output of your CNN. What is your CNN? That's your CNN. So very basic. A bunch of convolutions and a bunch of fully connected. That's going to give you your steering command. So nothing complicated. How do you evaluate the performance? Because you don't want to take this CNN, put it in your car, sit in it, and let it drive. What is one step before that? How can you make sure that everything is correct before actually sitting in a car and risking your life? What can you do? You can take your data, and these are some test data. These are the data that your car hasn't seen during training. You collect some de test data the same way. So somebody is driving your car. The same way that we did shift and rotation, you're going to do shift and rotation to these test data. And that's going to give you some synthesized images of the road. You show them to your CNN. Your network is going to make some predictions. It's going to keep trying to dr drive that car based on those simulations. And then you can see, are you making mistakes? Are you keeping your lane? Are you not keeping your lane? What is happening? But can you actually give me a number? If you have a manager in your industry, they want you to report your key performance indicator. How do you evaluate this? Give me a number. So you can define a metric. And your metric is autonomy. While your network is making predictions, it might decide to go left. And then if you decide to correct it, so somebody is correcting it, is 
uh, intervening, it's doing some interventions, you count the number of interventions that a human had to do. So a human is sitting behind his desk in his office or her office and then driving that car in the simulated environment. And you count the number of interventions. And then you keep driving for a while. And that's going to give you a metric that you can report of how good your CNN is doing. And once everything is done, you're happy, you can take that car, put it in the car, in the road and see in reality, is it actually driving correctly or no? So this is a framework of imitation learning that you're using in practice. So your car wants to imitate how an expert human driver would drive. And you can collect as much data as you have space for. So this data you're gonna store in a cloud, okay? But did, actually, did you actually learn anything? So classically, if you want to do reinforce, if you want to do self-driving cars, there are a lot of algorithms that are gonna try to detect the lane. So there are gonna be lane detections. You can see that without any lane detections, without any supervision, by just looking at raw data and looking at a human and trying to mimic the behavior of a human, your network in its weights or in its activations, so these are the actual activations, these are the first and second layer. So this is the first layer and the second layer of the activations. You are taking a look at them and you can see that the network is focusing on the lanes. So it's doing lane detection on its own. So there is no need for somebody to be labeling that this is a lane. Okay? And this is actually what uh, companies are doing. And usually when you want to do something, put a neural network in uh, production or put a software in production, you don't do it, you don't use only one framework. So you don't only use this framework, you use multiple different types of frameworks, different types of neural networks. So it's the same idea as ensembling. So some neural networks are trained based on doing uh, lane detection. Some of them are trained this way. You put all of them on your car and then you take the consensus. And if there is no consensus, these are safety concerns. Maybe you stop, maybe you warn the driver, something, okay? So it's not the only method, but it's one of the methods that are going to be mounted on your car. Any questions? Yeah, I was curious in this case, the, um, the output layer, is it a single scaling? And that's like a positive if it turns right and negative if it turns left, or is it like a softmax um, multinomial kind of thing? No, it's a continuous action space. Okay. And it's the angle of this wheel. Okay. So it's a, it's a scalar, continuous scaling. Okay. Continuous scalar, yes. So this output here is a continuous scalar. Cool. Any other questions? So in terms of methodology, there is nothing complicated here, but you can imagine that this is a hard engineering problem, okay? 